Can you even see it, Brandon? Um, on camera? Sort of? Is it, like, is it like a little square? I keep wanting to say fingerprint sensor, but it's not. It's a selfie camera. An underscreen selfie camera. This is the ZTE Axon 25G. And I don't know what's craziest about this thing. The fact that it has an underscreen selfie camera, so there's no pop-up, no notch, no hole punch, nothing. An underscreen, an in-display selfie camera, or the fact that it's like a mid-range priced phone at 450 US dollars. So let's wait for it to fire. Oh, that's interesting. I can already totally see it. Brandon, look at this. There it is, right there. It actually looks like a notch or a, or a hole punch, but they say the display goes over top of it. What else is in this box? Hey, my wish is granted. Oh, look at that. Thank you. Credit to ZTE, at least they still include a headphone adapter. Nice. Apple couldn't, it was too hard. Got a type A to type C, and then probably a wall wart. Yeah, that's really hard. Apple wasn't able to do that either. Not a North American one, but hey, good effort. Is that sick or what? Oh, it's a wave. Yeah, that looks really good. I've seen Honor do some really cool stuff like this, but that looks, like it doesn't look tacky, you know? That's cool. Mm -hmm. It does, it looks really cool. I wonder uh, if it's a little bit different on each phone. You know what else is cool? This segue to our sponsor, Wondershare. Their doctor phone software provides a seamless way to transfer WhatsApp chats between iOS and Android devices. You can back up WhatsApp Business, Line, Viber, Kick, and WeChat, which is pretty sweet, and preview and check any item you want and export it to your computer as an HTML file for reading or printing. It's 100% secure and won't keep, modify, or leak any data on your device or in the backup file. You can get up to 85% off Dr. Phone at the link in the video description. Thank you, Dr. Phone, or Wondershare rather, for sponsoring today's video. It's kind of like a, like a shadow there. It's a little kind of square, and then it's almost like a, like a dotted line square underneath it. Can you even see it, Brandon, um, on camera? Sort of, is it like, is it like a little square? It's a tiny little square. Yeah, I can. Can I you can make it out? Kind of see it. Okay. Oh yeah, there you go. Got it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but wait, hold on. So let's fire up some excellent, high-quality tech videos on YouTube. Just to use among the largest. Mono speaker. I mean, those are the kinds of compromises that you make when you're going with a mid-range device. Yes. Okay, I see it. Oh, interesting. They did a ton of work on the materials of the display in order to enable the selfie camera to work with a display over top of it. So they've got the cover glass, the polarizer, packing glass, all that's pretty normal. Then there's a transparent cathode, special OLED material, a transparent matrix, and then the baseboard glass underneath it. So that's those three ones that are in between what would already be clear that's designed for additional transparency. Now, if you guys saw our Linus Tech Tips video checking out the transparent OLED TV from LG, you'll know that transparent is more like translucent. I think that transparent TV allows 30% of the light through, somewhere in the 30 to 40% range. In order to build this, they had to work on a special pixel matrix. So I think what we're seeing right now, when we zoom this content, and you can see it, right, Brandon? So it looks kind of like it's low like little, res yeah, in that it's spot. Like, it's like faded a little bit, like yeah. a gradient. Yeah. When I get up close to it, it's very obvious because it's just the color's kind of off and there's like this screen door effect. I can see right through it. But from this distance, if I'm actually looking at the center of the screen, it's there, I can see it, but boy is that ever less noticeable than a notch or something like that in the middle of my freaking content. It's obvious why Apple hasn't shipped it yet. It's not, it's not Apple good yet, but it's like, it's usable. This one's got eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. It's got a 64 megapixel main shooter. Actually, I don't know how many megapixels the selfie cam is, but I doubt how many megapixels it is is gonna be the main uh, <laughs> bottleneck there. It's got a quadruple camera setup, which is pretty cool, I guess. You got that optical zoomability and all that good stuff. Uh, USB type C. I don't know if it's got dual SIM, so we'll go ahead and pop this out and have a look. Oh, micro SD, nice. 
You can go dual SIM or micro SD plus a SIM. Thank you very much ZTE for giving a crap about people who like to expand the storage in their phones. It's so funny how some of these features end up becoming mid-range features because, well, rich people would just buy a phone with more storage in it, wouldn't they? Playing around with brightness, the lower the brightness level, the less noticeable it is. And interestingly, the screen doesn't get crazy bright, which is something that I might expect from a more value-oriented phone. So it doesn't have wireless charging, although it does support 30 watt fast charging. And it's running a Snapdragon 765G chipset. So that's one of the ways that they were able to get 5G connectivity into this thing at a reasonable price, because with the premium chipset these days, at least until the 888 launches, which I think is happening really soon. It might even have happened by the time this video goes live, but for now, 765G is the way to go. Of course, whether or not you can see content over top of the camera is only half of the equation. We've got to fire up the camera and see if the camera can see your face through the content. This is it. This is gonna be my first look at myself through a display. It's awful. It's like there's a big hazy smudgy film. Wow, that is, oh man, that is something. So you can see the display is completely powered down in the area above the camera. So that's going to help with light transmission. But just like we learned when we looked at LG's transparent OLED TV, there's still elements of the display, like even just the wiring that has to be done to every pixel that you can't make clear or like not completely clear, at least not right now. So lowering the pixel density helps. That's why those OLEDs are 1080p right now at, uh, what are they, 55 inch, I think? 55 inch 1080p. There is a hit to image quality. There's more than just a camera built in here though. So there's an ambient light sensor, there's like under display sound. Under display sound. I don't even know what that means. I mean, it, it only had mono sound when I played back something in YouTube anyway. So if it, if it does have a stereo effect, it's not very good. Yeah. And under display fingerprint. And under display fingerprint. Well, that, okay, that we've seen before. And those under display fingerprint sensors were very obvious, kind of like this at first, like you could really see them. Now you can't see them at all. And it's only been a couple short years. If this, is, if this is sort of the beginning of where we're going with this technology, I've got high hopes that we could bid notches adieu sooner rather than later. Play around with the rear camera a little bit, actually. I kind of missed that whole, uh, just putting a second OLED display on the back and just using your main camera for selfies concept. <laughs> if someone like Samsung had done that, I think it would have been very interesting. ZTE still has some work to do on their processing, but um, this is not bad. DTSX Ultra 3D Sound, apparently. Now, hold on just a second here, because I didn't even pick up stereo in the YouTube app. For absolute maximum speeds, yeah, two sticks okay, is what you Okay, that's want, definitely a bottom firing speaker. We fired up the Chinese website, and apparently it's the wide angle, the 64 megapixel main shooter, the uh, there's a two megapixel depth sensor, and then a macro lens. So that's what the four different lenses are here. Does it have image stabilization on the couch? Uh, yes. Pretty well spec for a $450 device. Hey, it's, a, it's the blurry selfinator. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, hey, some people go and apply a blurification beauty filter to all their pictures anyway, Brandon. Mm -hmm. So am I not beautiful? Do you not think I'm beautiful, Brandon? Beautiful. With this blurred face? Yeah. Look at how all of my imperfections have been smoothed out. Just like my mm. imperfect end to this video. Subscribe to Short Circuit and uh, all our other channels. Actually, that's a lot. That's a big, that's a big burden. How about just Short Circuit and TechLint? Okay, deal, deal. And TechWiki.